Hello, yeah. welcome to Point Blank. Yeah, I'm Amanda. And I'm Kyling. And tonight we are going to hopefully try and offer you some insights on your eyesight. Yeah, that's right. And to help us do that, we have uh, Dr. Leonard Ang from the LASIK Surgery Clinic mm. and Quan Wei, a trained optometrist who is currently a professional and regulatory affairs manager at Johnson Johnson Vision Care Singapore. Yep, but first, um, we take a look at some of the, I don't know, I keep calling eye ailments, but... <laughs> No, eye conditions. Conditions, <laughs> yes, that um, are like rather common among Singaporeans. No, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. We are. But this is probably what you'll see if you're short-sighted and not using any corrective lenses. Singapore is literally the most myopic nation in the world. And the situation may be getting worse. In Singapore, one in four seven-year-olds is myopic. One in three in Premier 3 is short-sighted, and half of all 12-year-olds too. And among 18-year-old males, more than 80% have myopia. So what exactly is happening in your eyes when you have myopia or short-sightedness? Well, to put it simply, short-sightedness occurs when your eyeball is longer and light rays are focused in front of the retina. Close objects look clear, but distant objects are blurred. Farsightedness is the opposite. Your eyeball is shorter and images are focused behind the retina. Distant objects are clear while near objects are blurred. Another common condition is astigmatism. This is when your cornea has unequal curvatures. When you have astigmatism, objects both near and far are distorted or blurred. All three conditions can be corrected with spectacles and contact lens, which alters or help the focusing mechanism of the eye to focus a sharp image onto the retina. <laughs> All right, that was um, Amanda in my glasses. But yeah. anyway, um, since we have the experts here, let's just maybe um, um, ask them, are, are the stats correct? Did I get anything wrong in that, <laughs> in that video? No, it's pretty. It's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty accurate. I think uh, majority of. And the of definitions. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Correct. Uh, yeah. Myopia is uh, short sightedness. Commonly called short sightedness. It is the commonest um, uh, refractive area among Asians and Singaporeans. Singapore actually has the dubious reputation of having the highest rate of myopia in the world. Um, but uh, other Asian countries as well have very high myopia, like China, uh, Taiwan, uh, Japan, Japanese have a lot of myopia. Um, yeah, the stats are pretty accurate. Uh, majority of people, by the time they hit NS for guys, or they hit tertiary education, or hit 18 years of age, most people are myopic. Okay. Mm. Maybe just a uh, show of hands. La. I mean, obviously <laughs> I am <laughs> myopic. Uh, uh, how are our eyesight over here? Bad. Bad. <laughs> what <Definitely. are> you? <laughs> I'm very short-sighted, yes. I, I think it's like 800, 700. 800, 700. Yeah. What about you, Conway? Yeah, it's very bad. It's about uh, 500. <laughs> oh, which mine's worse. I, I, always thought, thick as well. I always thought 500 is average because I always tell people my eyesight is quite average. <laughs> 500 <laughs> and like 450. I'm 75. 75. So, low See, enough. This is the best. Yeah, this is the... Oh, I'm not I'm the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, we have sort of... It has sort of been getting worse in the last, like, what, three generations, according to the National Eye Centre, <laughs> where I got all my research from. Do you, do you see a trend where it's getting worse, though? Because now it's really quite bad. Is there a trend that's yeah, getting worse? Yeah, I mean, uh, in general, uh, Johnson & Johnson Vision Care has been really concerned about the eye health in Singapore. I mean, it, it's actually a trend whereby uh, a lot of the population is, uh, is getting uh, myopic, mm. and not only that, with some amount of astigmatism as well. So on our part, besides that, uh, as an industry leader in terms of uh, contact lens supply, we are also very much keenly involved in the whole education process, really, educating the uh, consumers and the public as well on the importance of uh, proper corrections mm. of the eyes. Mm. So basically, in the three-year studies, uh, they were done to, uh, from 06 to 06 all the way to 2008. Uh, basically, uh, we have actually interviewed a substantial number of the uh, population in Singapore. And basically what we are finding is that uh, within a three-year period, uh, there's about a 20% increase in the number of actually uh, uh, patients who actually feedback that they have uh, astigmatism. Mm. So that translates roughly to about uh, 450,000 people in Singapore 
having uh, astigmatism mm. as one of the problem in their eyes as well. Okay. Mm. Yes. So I guess it begs the question, right? Uh, why do Singaporeans have such bad, bad eyesight? eyesight? I mean, are we just genetically more inclined or has it got something to do with lifestyle maybe? <laughs> the things we eat. Oh, oh. it's in the water. <laughs> no, but seriously. I think short-sightedness is multifactorial. There are mm. many reasons. But certainly genes play an important role. I mean, for example, the Western population, the, ch the incidence of myopia is much, much lower. Mm. In fact, for them, a lot of them end up being long-sighted, hyperopic. So it's a, uh, Asians have a much higher chance of getting uh, short-sightedness or myopia. Also, we not only have a higher incidence, but we also have a greater severity of myopia. So you get a lot of people with much higher degrees, like mm. 800 degrees, like yourself. And uh, so there's a very strong genetic component. Uh, and yes, uh, over the past few decades, 19, if you look at the census from 1970, 1980, now 1990, then in the 2000s, uh, uh, now 2008, you will find that actually the incidence of myopia is increasing. So there is uh, some uh, genetic makeup involved. But there is also an environmental factor as well. Uh, and certain studies, you know, Singapore um, uh, has very strong record for myopia research. And uh, some studies have shown that uh, when we compare various cohorts of people who do more near work compared to people who don't do as much near work, uh, people who do a lot of near work have a higher incidence of myopia. Um, uh, also, it's, myopia has also been found to be negatively correlated to uh, the amount of outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. So the people who tend to spend more time outdoor tend to be less myopic or have a lo that those populations have a less incidence of myopia. So there, there are many factors involved. But certainly, there is a strong genetic component because uh, Asians are predominantly affected, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they have very, very high myopia. You don't see this sort of degrees in a lot of the Caucasian populations. Mm. Yeah, and I definitely agree on this. It's really uh, 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 genetic. It could be possibly genetic. It could also be environmental factors. So that's why a lot of uh, near work does play a part as well in terms of uh, resulting in uh, refractive problems, be it myopia or astigmatism. Mm. And so much so that I think especially in the office crowd, a lot of people are actually using a lot of computers, doing mm. long hours in front of the computer use. And so even it, when it comes to contact lenses, you know, we, we also have gotten uh, lenses such as Acubit Oasis that actually helps uh, in terms of uh, near work activities such as computer use for somebody to be able to actually use computer for long hours. Mm, okay. I understand. So even if you have... <laughs> <laughs> so I guess... What does it do? Yeah. No, so, so basically it's, it's, a, it's a trend. Really, people are spending a long, long hours in front no, of... No, what, what yeah, the, the lenses? Yeah, the lenses. <laughs> How oh, does it protect? Right, right. Well, basically for those lenses, what it does is actually it has got uh, certain elements within the lenses that's able to really cling on to moisture, be it from the tears, or within the lens itself so that uh, this moisture doesn't get lost to the environment. Mm. So for example, mm. when you're actually using a lot of computers and you know, doing a lot of new work, that actually results in a, well, a greater incidence of myopia or astigmatism. What happens is you don't really blink as much as you should because when you're actually concentrating on the facts and figures of the computer use, you, know, you don't blink as much and when you don't blink as much, the tear exchange within the eyes is not as good, it's not as optimal. Okay. So what that happens, it, it, it translates to greater dry eye issue. And very often, you know, in, a, in, a, in an office environment, it's, uh, it's coupled with air condition as well. Mm. So that really uh, sets us thinking, I mean, from a company perspective. I mean, granted, we can't help it. More, more and more people are doing a lot of new work, mm. irregardless of the fact that myopia and astigmatism are becoming a really, really concern. Mm. But we do have to actually have lenses that actually are able to uh, kind of uh, suit such a behavior in the office as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for like, let's say somebody who has myopia, how is, are there any like specific ways maybe you can stop it from progressing as fast? <laughs> it seems like once you get it, you're doomed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's going out fine. every year. I think, um, I think um, uh, there have been very, a lot of uh, possible uh, options have been proposed. Uh, many studies have been carried out, you know, they compared um, um, things like the use of contact lenses versus spectacles, mm, mm. the idea of maybe undercorrecting versus giving a full correction for a child, uh, and uh, the use of eye drops. Okay, so some eye drops have been uh, used and uh, proposed to help to prevent or delay the uh, onset of myopia. Mm. Uh, but um, it's still a controversial area. Mm -hmm. um, many things have come and gone, and then you still you see you also see sometimes in the pharmacies sometimes they sell certain 
devices which are supposed to help pinhole glasses, to yeah. pinhole glasses <laughs> yeah. you know, relaxation devices which cost a lot of money sometimes and uh, supposedly to reduce the, the development or the progression of mm. uh, myopia. Uh, uh, a lot of them do no harm and so there's really no harm trying but uh, the scientific evidence uh, points that uh, not, uh, most of these um, uh, treatments do not have a definite effect. Mm. Uh, I think the one... Uh, Certainly, the, the, the one thing in Singapore, among Singaporeans, is the amount of stress they have, and uh, a lot of them, because of the paper chase, you know, even for a very young age, mm -hmm. they start uh, being asked to do a lot of work. So the, the, more, the greater amount of near work that a child does, uh, does predispose them to a higher degree of myopia. Mm. Uh, but you can't avoid that. You can't ask the child not to study. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, <laughs> relaxing the eyes in between uh, a lot of intensive work can help, you know, but uh, once again, that does not mean that the person will not be myopic. Mm -hmm. People who don't do a lot of work still are myopic. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, people who do a lot of work may never get myopia. So there is still that strong genetic component. Some uh, medications have been tried. In particular, atropine has been tried for children. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain uh, considerations because there are side effects with using atropine. Uh, but that has been postponed as one option and some studies are currently being carried out in Singapore to mm -hmm. see whether or not there are any long-term side effects and what the long-term effect is. Uh, uh, other things have been tried uh, for myopic children like neurovision. These are all possible things. But uh, really, there is no uh, very good, uh, safe treatment at this point in time, which definitely, for every child, would stop or prevent mm -hmm. the development mm -hmm. or definitely retard, uh, prevent the progression of myopia. So unfortunately, at this point in time, <laughs> studies are still going on, but there's no uh, good single treatment which solves all these problems. Uh. Yeah, because from yeah. what I remember, I didn't do anything, but just <laughs> keep going up. <laughs> yeah, it increases every year. Yeah, every year. Just now you mentioned like the, the pinhole mm. uh, sp uh, specs. Do they really work? Because from yeah. Amanda and my <laughs> very myopic point of view, it's just like, doesn't it just strain your eye even more? Yeah, because like, you look through the tiny hole. So how does that thing... I don't know, what's the yeah. theory behind yeah. it? I think, I think all forms of refractive correction, whether it's spectacles or contact lenses, aim to help to focus uh, objects from a distance to a point on the retina. Mm. So what happens when a person has refractive error uh, you get a diffuse focal point, uh, sometimes mm. in front or behind the retina, depending on whether your eyeball is too short or too long. What the pinhole does is it narrows all those uh, 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 points of light, you know, and it allows it to pass through a very, very small area so that it's more likely to hit the retina. Uh, and so the pinhole effect uh, works f uh, in general, you know, you don't have to wear pinhole glasses, but the pinhole effect certainly helps to reduce the amount of myopia, or it lets the person see well, hmm. because it just basically reduces the spreading of light uh, close to the nerve, so that things become sharper on the nerve head. Okay? Uh, so by using a pinhole pair of glasses, you're essentially having all these small little tiny holes, and they are having a multiple pinhole effect. That's about it. So pinholes uh, help to reduce uh, the amount of spreading of light, and therefore get a person whether if he has any form of refractive error, can give him improved vision, but it uh, may not be very practical for a person to walk around uh, routinely <laughs> with all these multiple pinholes. So a lot of times it's used for near work, you know, when no one is yeah. really looking at the person. Yep. It's cosmetically, it's not very appealing, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it, it does work from a very simple, the th okay. very simple physics behind yeah, it. So, so really the gut feel is that at this point in time, there's no real definitive mm. treatment mm. or cure for yeah. refractive errors. Yeah. So I think we at Johnson & Johnson feel that sometimes it's better to be uh, so-called prevention is better than cure. So that's why we're at this point in time, we're very much into the educating the public mm. on some of the environmental factors, genetic factors. Mm. We can't change that. You know? mm. We're born to the, the certain kinds of parents, certain races. Mm. We can't change that. But at least in terms of environmental factors, like teaching and, and educating the public on the proper way to actually read, mm. having intermittent rest in between uh, near work activities. So these are things that we are keenly uh, want to pursue to okay. actually get the public to be really aware on how to actually take care of their eyes. Okay, I just have one question. Is it right for me to say that because whether you are uh, you are myopic or have far sightedness, it's because your your eyeball, right, the shape of your eyeball, right. So that is nothing. That is something that you cannot change with glasses or pinhole glasses. So. Technically, pinhole glasses don't work because in ultimately, your the the shape of your eyeball is still the same, right? 
it's like right. a short term solution. Yeah, I mean it's just for that moment. It's just it just works like sort of in a way like glasses, like you mentioned. You know, it changed the way it's focused on the retina, right? But otherwise, you're still short sighted because oh, yeah. your the the shape of your eyeball is really like that. That's right. right. Mm. I mean, these are all not cures. Oh. These are merely optical devices to help focus uh, points of light on your retina. That's all it does. The moment you take off your glasses, you're as blind as you yeah. were before uh, whether you wore the glasses or not. You're still 800 degrees of short sightedness regardless of whether you wear the glasses or not. So can so I say yeah. that claims that that if you wear it for a few hours every day, you progressively oh, yeah, have yeah. your myopia. That's what just now I was looking at the websites and then they claim, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they claim right. that when you wear it for a certain period of time, then yeah, your myopia will actually like reduce or you'll go back to normal. Precisely. In fact, in fact, there, there have been studies to show to compare spectacle uh, corrected people versus mm. uh, uh, contact lens wearers, for example, mm. to see whether contact lenses can prevent or delay the progression of myopia. Uh, very controversial area and there's no good scientific evidence to show that it definitely does that. And so in general, uh, as, as eye specialists, we don't advocate wearing contact lenses to prevent uh, the progression of myopia. Uh, there's no strong scientific evidence for that. But in the past, that has been suggested. So that's one of those things which have people have tried. Uh, another common thing is eye relaxation uh, muscle, uh, exercises. You know, people have come and then spoken that you know through eye relaxation, mm -hmm. all your degrees can be gone. Uh, they are uh, basically uh, what it. The, the the basic concept is to relax the muscles. So the thing is that the muscles in your eye can actually, with strain, uh, give a false degree of myopia. So a person who's eight degrees, for example, if you're spinning uh, ten hours at the desk your myopia can appear to increase to an additional 50 or 100 degrees just by virtue of the strain. And that's the oh, contraction okay. of the muscles inside. Mm. So by relaxing, uh, by not doing so much near work, you're actually dropping it back down to its original amount, which is based on the size of the eyeball as oh. well as the shape of the cornea. Okay. So relaxation does sort of reduce, in a way, uh, the degree of myopia. But that's the temporary component of myopia. It doesn't change your eye shape. Mm. Okay. Uh, and so these relaxation exercises essentially all serve to do that. But they don't really cure myopia, yeah. although uh, some people have proposed that it may really dramatically reduce it, uh, but it really doesn't cure it. You know. So the, the jury is still out on all these uh, possible treatments. Basically, if there was any single good treatment, then uh, it would have become a national campaign that everybody has yeah, been asking. Yeah, and the person yeah. who came out of it will be rich. Precisely. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's really not, uh, at this point in time, it's not, not really an issue about <coughs> treatment because there's no definitive treatment at this point in time. But more importantly, it's about mm. wearing the correct visual corrections, mm. you know, for whatever mm. issues that they mm. have. For example, when it comes to astigmatism, even when in a contact lens field, we've developed lenses that is able to stabilize really well on the eye. Because what happens with astigmatism is you do not want a corrective device that rotates too much in the eyes because then that would actually cause the vision to fluctuate. Mm. So uh, lenses such as our acuvioasis or astigmatism, they actually have a stabilization technique that actually allows the lens to really be very focused and very, very stable on the eye. So irregardless of how you blink your eyes or if you're very much into lifestyle things, that nowadays, you know, uh, patients and cast consumers are into active lifestyles. Mm. They take up yoga, they do gravity-defying stunts, <laughs> right? So, so nowadays, uh, with with the, the new lenses, the new contact lenses, they have actually come to a point whereby, even in this kind of activities, the v vision remains optimal, remains very very well corrected. So, I think at this point in time, it is really about uh, wearing the right vision corrections. Uh, for whatever refractive errors that you may actually suffer from at this point. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, if you're still a bit blur about like, <laughs> good one, right? About <laughs> things to do with your eyesight, um, do stay with us as we debunk some myths about, you know, what to do and what not to do.